morning. It's a cold morning. But I'm happy to be out. We're now mid-April. And I've come back to Mud Beach, a place I've not been to for a few years until this week. So as it stands right now, we're, we're here, it's Good Friday, so I'm, I'm out enjoying the Easter weekend time off. But we had really warm temperatures all week and uh, quite a bit the week before as well. Oh, it's cold, my nose is running. So I come down on Tuesday, um, my good buddy Jan was working in the area, so I just worked down the road, he was staying I had a hotel just up the road the other way, so just for a chance to see him while he's uh, in the area, I thought, okay, well, I'll do an after work session right nearby and have him come down and visit. So on Tuesday, I shot up from work, uh, set up, yawn arrived, and we got to catch up for a bit. I had two fish. So a little two hour session, uh, shot a little clip of it, uh, of the first fish, which was, you know, a decent size, you know, they, they don't get, well, I can't say they don't get huge in here because we, you know, there is 30 pounders that come out of this area uh, every year, uh, just not many. But, you know, eight, 10 pounds, you know, decent little fish. And then uh, about an hour later, I got another small one. Uh, just took a photo of that one and put it back. Uh, neat scales on that one, kind of a neat body shape to that one. But the fish were rising. Um, you know, I got the two bites. What was key though, was that all the muck had come up off the bottom. So every spring, you know, we go to our, our different favorite places to fish and once, once spring hits and the temperatures are warm and all that algae and muck comes up off the bottom and flows to the surface, but then we know that it's really time for things to kick off. Well, that happened Tuesday, like during the day while I was at work before I got here. Because uh, I drove by uh, Monday night and it was completely clear. And as soon as I arrived Tuesday, muck was everywhere and the fish were moving around. So yeah, had a pleasant little session on Tuesday. And I thought, you know what, I've got a morning available to me right now. Uh, for the Friday. Um, so I'm going to quickly just get out try and get a few bites. Get a little bit on camera and then I have I have a lot to do this afternoon to prepare for a bit of a social tomorrow. What makes things different today is that the temperature has plummeted. So I, when I when I uh, when I was at work yesterday and on my way home it was like 17 18 degrees. The day before it was like 22. Uh, right now it's four, and it's not expected to get past you know nine or ten by the end of the day. So I'm hoping it hasn't shut these fish off. I'm also really hoping it doesn't shut the fish off for tomorrow because it's supposed to be colder and rain, <coughs> and that's going to be really tough. Because I'm going to have my son out all day uh, for that social tomorrow. But for now, I'm going to enjoy my coffee. Everything is set up. And we're going to see if the fish start moving around. Got a little bit of bait out there. They were on it straight away on Tuesday. I think it'll be a little bit of a, a slower start today, but once that sun comes up, maybe I have a pretty good chance at a fish. One saves a blank. Two or three makes for a good morning. All we can do is wait.
I had some really weird indication on that rod and then it just locked right up. Damn bullhead. Kind of a blank saver, but does it really count? Crap. As it stands right now, I've got a pretty good chill uh, going on right now. The uh, with the wind picking up, it's gotten quite cold over here. So it's only just coming up on eight o'clock now. In, in in an hour and a half fishing, the only indication is a catfish. I, I think I think the smart thing to do, being in the teeth of a cold wind and not seeing any signs. Um, you know the sun's up over my area uh, and if they want to be in the sun that's that's where they're going to be but with the wind the way it is they might not be there until later today and being on limited time you know I got to make the most of my uh, my session opportunities so I have some options I can stay here and continue to be really cold in hopes that the fish move in on my bait because for all I know they could be on the back of the wind and I guess technically there is another spot I can go to that has available parking on the other side of that island over there that should get me out of the wind the problem is, is it's deeper and it has more flow so I don't think the water will be any warmer. I'm over here because it's shallow and this is where they move into in the spring. So that's option one. I can go check that spot out. Or, sorry, option one is to stay. Option two is to go over and check the other spot on the back of the wind uh, where it's deeper and, and more flow. And I only have light LEDs with me because I'm using the light setup. So that may not necessarily be practical. Uh, option three is I could head down to the marsh by my house. You know, it's close to home and there is a spot I can park. But we've not seen signs there yet. We saw signs downriver from there, but the wind and the rain that we've had will have it very, very muddy. And I'm, I don't know, it's not screaming to me as, as an option yet. My final option would be to go fish where I'm going to be doing the social tomorrow. try it out. Um, tomorrow we'll be fishing right into the lake, but there's a little tributary that feeds it, feeds into it, where the fish have been seen, a few fish have been seen. Dave's been, oh, Dave's been baiting the spot up all week for tomorrow, uh, so that when we arrive we all have a pretty good chance. He's, he's been keeping the bait going in steady, and the tributary that uh, is right near there, he said he's seen some fish. So, I could go there and try and winkle out a fish or two. Because it's not far from where I am now. It, it's, it's, I'm probably at the halfway point of heading back towards home or up to that other spot. So, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to give it a half an hour here. And after a half hour, if nothing has happened, no more indication or anything like that. If I start getting liners, I'm sticking it out. But if there's no more indication in the next half hour, now that the sun is on that spot, um, I'm, I'm just going to kind of play this up as the fish are on the back of the wind or they've moved um, with the wind for further, further west of where I am. Because um, there's more reeds and such over there for them to get into. 
which I'm sure would help warm them up as well. Okay, 30 minutes. Weigh my options. I have several. And, uh, Gotta do something. I'd like to get a carp today. Just in case we plank fishing in the lake tomorrow. I want a fish or two today. Uh, yeah, 30 minutes. We'll see what happens. unexpected um, literally started packing up and freezing my butt off and there's been no signs now I got a fish let's get a look at it well um, yeah I had pretty much given up and thought for sure wasn't gonna happen here. Yeah, it just out of nowhere. I had one quick beep on the uh, on the left hand rod, and then it started peeling off. And yeah, I really couldn't get the camera on fast enough. we go. Nice, nice carp to take care of the blank.
I may still uh, I may still change locations, but uh, for now I'm going to get this fish back, get the rig back out, and uh, just get myself tidied up so that if I do decide to leave, I can I can leave really quick because man, I got a wicked chill now. a little bit messed up. The wind has just just gotten horrible. Absolutely horrible. It's it's really cold. Like I'm I'm almost completely packed up. I just gotta bring in the rods and uh, yeah I, I literally only put the camera on to capture the wind and the swans the swans have been fighting. Um, two others have moved in on this one's territory. So they've been kind of fighting and I wanted to get them. They keep coming in and close in front of me here and then they move back out by the island. So I thought I'd get a really cool swan battle shot, you know, like awesome action stuff. And the right hand rod rips off. Um, I don't think he's as big as the last one, but carp number two. Uh, I can't get my rigs out. Um, can't get my rigs out as far as I was fishing with this wind the way it is just howling in on me so uh, I am gonna show you this fish then and get out of here uh, weird thing while I was playing that fish I can just see it now in the waves um, it's obviously come across from the other side I saw this dead a dead fish or stunned fish coming at me as I was standing there I looked down and it's uh, it's quillback Hang on, I'm going to see if I can get it. Hang on a second. something I would typically do but uh, I had to pick this up just to show you an example because I'll probably never catch one to get it on camera but this 
Get the quill back. Look at the fins on that. It's so cool, so unique. Very tiny mouth. Obviously, he's not in good shape. Um, yeah, looks like he's probably not been dead long, but he's definitely dead. I'm gonna just put him over here. There was a fox over here about an hour ago. I'm gonna put this over here for the, for him. And then we'll look at my fish. So this one, ah, uh, we got the camera pointing downward. That is not gonna help matters. Ooh, that's up too high. How's that, a happy medium? Uh, that one was on the the peach and orange pop-up, that darker orange one that I put on first thing. That's my first fish with the peach and orange. Because this is the first time I've used it. This one's kind of an ugly one, but he's got a huge mouth on it. Fish number two. Huge mouth on this little guy. But that's uh, two fish. Save the blank, horrible winds. You know, I, I really probably shouldn't have gotten a fish, but I did. And I got to see a cool back up close. Uh, as dead as it was. It's the closest I've ever actually gotten to a quillback. I've never actually held one before. Uh, there's one I've been trying to catch in the park lake for years and I may never, but uh, it was cool. Okay. Um, Definitely a noisier location right near the highway, uh, but it's location two. And I've already had some liners. Uh, so I put my left hand rod in the margin, almost even with where I'm sitting here. So it's only 15 feet out uh, from the rod tip and maybe four feet out from the bank. So it's very, very close in here. That's the one that's had the liners already. My right hand rod is down on the opposite margin, right along some reeds. And my middle rod is in open water towards the snags across from me, but probably two rod lengths sh short of it. So really kind of in the middle. Um, I'm fishing a pond. Uh, tomorrow, we're going to have a social, as I mentioned earlier, uh, where we'll be fishing into the lake. And my son will be with me, and the idea is that I'm going to have him fish his rod into the pond here. Uh, as I mentioned before, while Dave has been baiting up the lake all week, he has seen some fish in here in the pond. So that gets me excited that Zane may catch a fish. But for right now, you know, while I'm going to make the most of my time, um, I'm in a better location comfort-wise. I, I was catching fish, but I was brutally cold, and, and I'm somebody who's fine with being uncomfortable in a spot if I'm catching fish. That left hand rod's getting liners again. I'm willing to be uncomfortable for the sake of catching fish. But the problem that ended up happening at the other location, despite my being uncomfortable, was that I just couldn't cast my rigs out as far as I wanted to against the, the wind. Uh, even without pack bait, they weren't flying where I needed them to. So, just for the simple practicality of I was unable to fish effectively where I was because of the wind. I've had to leave it. But now I'm in a spot where the wind is, is still coming across at me, but it's a much warmer wind, oddly enough. 
and I am somewhat protected. You know, I've got the reed bank behind me, I'm underneath a great big willow tree, and I've got kind of high embankments around where the highway bridge is and across, so the cold, bitter wind that was coming across the lake where I was is not a problem here. So windy, yes. Cold, no. My jacket's off. I'm much more comfortable. And like I said, I'm getting liners on the left-hand route already. So this will give me an opportunity to get a good assessment of what's going on here in the pond for Zane to enjoy his session tomorrow. Because tomorrow is going to be colder and potentially wetter. So if I'm going to have him out all day in some less than comfortable conditions, I want to make sure he's at least catching fish. Because even if I blank on the lake tomorrow, if my son gets a fish tomorrow, then my day is made. So for right now, I'm just going to sit back. I'm going to have a bite to eat. And I'm going to see if that left-hand rod materializes into more than just a catfish. Hopefully, while I'm here, something will come along. Something's going to happen on that left. I'm sure of it. Well, a bit of a shitstorm there. Uh, I'm still getting some wax and indication on the left hand rod. A couple of good solid hard wax, too. I think it's just catfish. Um, had a ripping take on the middle rod, set into nothing. So without putting pack bait on, I just whipped the single right back on the spot very quickly. And as soon as I did that, put it down, got back to my chair, it peeled off again. Uh, I think I had the camera on that at the time. And my line shot way over to the left, right up into the reeds. And uh, got me into the snags on the left. And I thought I had something decent. Turns out it's another angler further down the bank who would cast over my line. So that sucked. So then I come back after he untangled it. I come back over, I get set back up, put the middle rod back out. It goes again. So I run over there, grabbing it, hoping it's not him again. And there's nothing there. But while I'm doing that, the right hand rod goes, the, the one that was in the right hand margin. Like wicked take, like took drag, just started peeling and set into it and it was you could tell there was something there but it was coming in way too easy and it was a channel catfish about that big that was just spinning on the line so i sacrificed catching fish for a little bit more comfort As, Car as Kevin would say, karma is a bit of a bitch. I should have stayed where I was and put up with the cold and the wind and maybe just look to see if I had some heavier leads to punch through the wind. 
but I'm here now. I've got more time still, so I'm gonna stick it out for a little while. There's trout anglers casting spoons around. Um, I'm not sure what the guys to my left are doing, but there's a lot of activity with other anglers. So, hard to say how it's gonna play out for me, but. Oh, there's the right hand rod again. this morning at the other spot. Now, I did, right before I had that tangle up with the other angler, I did see a really good carp bosh out on the far bank over there by the sand. I don't want to put a rig over there because all the spoon chuckers are going over there. So I don't want to put one over there knowing that I can almost guarantee somebody else is going to pick up my line. It's really not fair to everyone else either if I try to mac take up all this space of the pond just because I can use three rods fishing carp and they can't uh, fish in the other species. So I'm going to try and stay contained to my little space, but if I keep getting catfish, I'm going to have to uh, I'm gonna have to make a change. I'm almost certain it's the corn and the pack bait that they're after and they're just picking up the bait because we all know catfish will suck in anything. But there are definitely carp uh, about, so keep trying. Uh, a little update here. I've been smashing catfish, um, so I stopped putting pack bait on the rods, uh, the middle and the right hand rod, because that's the ones that are going. The left hand rod hasn't done anything since shortly after I got here. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, hang on, let me see what's going on in the middle now. Just as I say that. Okay, I've got a fish of some size on this middle rod. Which is gonna be tricky because just moments ago, I put a pretty decent mid-double carp in the net with my left-hand rod. So now this one's kiting over to the right. I gotta figure out what it is and see if I can get them both in the net. But keep this one out of the other rod.
Okay, so just as I was telling you that uh, I had one in the net, <laughs> uh, the other one went off. So the, the left hand rod, like I said, I hadn't done anything for a while. A couple of little blips and a drop back. I thought it was just a catfish, so I just casually walked over, picked it up, and then all of a sudden there was some really good weight to it. Then, uh, yeah, once I got that one in the net, the middle rod just tore off out in open water. Um, virtually the same size fish. They're very close, but they look very different. One's got some very unique scales. The other one's more pale in color. So let's have a look at them. So this was the margin rod. This is the one with the neat scales on it. Right around the gill plate there, see some really cool scales, and then down this side as well. So I'm very pleased with that. And then fish number two's got a bit more of a pot belly. Oh, stop it. But it's much paler in color. Very, very pretty fish. Lovely brace. So it's two fish in the first spot, two fish in the second spot. Not a bad day. That puts me to, oh, it's 24 for the year so far. 24 carp. I'm gonna see if I can get a couple of photos and then uh, get these fish back. And then I got absolute carnage over there with those two rods to try and sort out. because I've apparently almost filled up this uh, this memory card. Um, had another catfish since I had those carp, but that was it. Nothing else. The wind has gotten really bad. Um, I put my umbrella up to try and block it a bit and hopefully protect me from this what looks like oncoming rain and the wind absolutely went carnage on my brawly here. Um, blew, the, blew it right inside out, bent a bunch of the ribs, so I'm gonna have some adjustments to do on this when I get it home. Um, Dave has turned up to put bait in uh, into the lake for us for tomorrow. Like I said before, he's been doing that all week trying to prep that spot. Uh, I know he plans on fishing there uh, as, as well. Not He's working tomorrow, that's the only reason he's probably not gonna fish with us. Uh, he's got work today as well, so he's just here to stop in, visit, put bait out, and then uh, head off to work today. But with these wind gusts getting the way they are, I don't know how much longer I'm gonna stick it out. Had a few fish, I'm happy, did well. Two different spots. Uh, but the way the weather is, it might just get to be a bit too much. I have to be home by about 3.30. Gives me about two hours of fishing left. 
so I just have to decide do I stick it out for another two hours hope for another bite or do I just pack it in and get a little get a little bit more rest These nasty clouds are coming so yeah I'll probably pack up everything except the rods for now um, pack up the camera gear just kind of shut it all down like we're done and uh, yeah thanks for joining me today I had fun